Uh, I also have a blog, Power BI Portugal. It's it's uh, in Portuguese, but using the translation tools, you can always uh, um, get uh, uh, the information I, I post there. And I'm also part of Fabric Power BI Portugal, a meetup uh, group where we uh, do monthly uh, meetings. Uh, we have some in person and some online. Uh, so, but it, uh, you and we also have a YouTube channel where we have lots of. Uh, information about Fabric and about Power BI. Also, uh, check it out if you want to to have some some uh, great sessions also that we deliver. So, um, what are we going to talk about today? So, uh, I'm not going to to enter about what is Fabric. Probably everyone over here already uh, knows what is Fabric, but I'm going to give some concepts about the One Lake, about how the the One Lake stores files in Parquet files. Uh, the, the Parquet format, not uh, uh, very uh, deep dive. I'm not an expert in Parquet files, not even in technical issues. As I said, I'm, I have a financial background, been working 100% uh, in this area of data and analytics for the last two and a half years. So, uh, but I'm not the main expert on this, but I took some ideas and I was able to, to, to learn a lot about this. Uh, and then I will talk also about what are the main concepts of direct lay, some of the problems that we may encounter. And then I will try to, to showcase uh, really quickly uh, what is direct lake versus direct query. And we see what are, how can we take advantage of that. So, okay, so main concepts. So the one lake, Basically, it's the one drive for data. This is how uh, Microsoft presents it. Uh, if we think about uh, 20 years ago, maybe not that long, we were uh, passing Excel files through email, through uh, USB drives, through CDs, uh, uh, CD drives, DVD, uh, whatever. And we were making copy after copy of uh, an Excel file or a Word document. And we never knew what was the last version of that data. So of that uh, Excel file. And there was always problems because uh, sometimes people use uh, wrong versions or older versions, and it was a uh, big uh, confusion. Then OneDrive came and another similar to them, and people started to save, to store their their documents on a, on a single place. And currently with Office 365, for example, uh, people are already editing it directly on the cloud without the need to to make any uh, updates and without the need of asking what is the latest version we can even check what who, who did what and when and uh, the idea uh, uh, behind the one lake is exactly the same so but the difference is instead of being uh, for uh, excel files or word documents is for our data that can be excel files also so and this is a, a, a um, also, the, the question of release, all the data in the organization, being it uh, Azure, uh, Azure database, being it uh, um, a document, uh, a video, uh, um, uh, um, a link, whatever it is. So the idea uh, behind the one lake is to store everything in the same location. This will allow that the payloads that we see over here on the top access that information to on the one lake, and we can have uh, information like uh, going information for data factory, for Synapse data engineering, uh, data warehousing. So we can do a lot of things. Real time analytics is currently uh, on the big request, and also our uh, old friend Power BI is also uh, as ways to consume this data directly from the one lake. So the, the when we talk about the one lake, uh, the one lake, the the, the data is stored. Uh, uh, using a, uh, a simplified, uh, simple format, so it's Delta Parquet. This is an open format, uh, uh, open a standard for for the uh, for the industry that uh, takes out uh, uh, the advantages of being highly uh, uh, optimized for uh, ingestion and uh, analysis. So we are able to. Uh, to do great uh, uh, and quick analysis on top of data that we store in Delta Parquet. Uh, once again, the data is stored in the lake house, uh, the, in the one lake in this case, 
and we can access it without the need of importing or, or exporting. And currently, for example, we are already having previews of the shortcuts and of mirroring, so we can even uh, ingest data to our one lake without the need of, uh, of storing it in the one lake itself. It can be stored in Snowflake or in Databricks, whatever, in other, in other uh, locations. So, and all the compute engines have been optimized for that. And then we have the several uh, uh, workloads that consume the data using different languages, T-SQL, uh, TQL, Spark, Python, Analysis Service. So we, we have a, a combination of not only uh, uh, workloads, but also personas that can work on top of this, and we can have a lot of uh, interactions with our information inside the one lake. Uh, sorry, this one lake is very uh, uh, is very uh, straightforward, and this layer works not only inside the fabric workloads, and those are have a direct access to it, and without uh, further. Uh, uh, problems, but also outside applications, other applications can consume the data from the one way. And this is a very, uh, 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 this is an option that uh, people always tend to, to like. Why? Because sometimes people don't want to be vendor locked in in terms of the use case of the information. And in this case, the data, although it's stored on the one lake, for example, using an API, uh, we can consume it in Databricks or other compatible applications. Why? Because the format is a, is a standard format that is used uh, across uh, several different types of technologies. So it's, it's always a, a good option for us to consume our data and for the organizations to have it stored in a single location. As I said, it's the one drive for data. So, but let's look a little bit, and again, I'm not an expert on, on, on Parquet files. I, I took this information that I'm going to show you this layout. I took it from the data Mozart, Nicola. Uh, he, he helped me out, a uh, big shout out to him, and also to Sandeep, uh, because I, I, I talked with him a few, a few times just to understand these concepts of the direct lake, of the Parquet files, of the fallback. So uh, they helped me to, to get some information on this. Uh, on top of the, the one that is already available. But the Parquet files allow for uh, data compression using uh, uh, encoding, encoding algorithm, algorithms and provide a, a reduced memory consumption. How is this achieved? So basically, uh, uh, Parquet files are, uh, and uh, don't quote me on this, I think it's a CSV on steroids. So it's a, a, columnar, a columnar storage file. So this means that instead of looking at our uh, data row by row, so for example, if I wanted to see our sales uh, per product, for example, for the product T-shirt, in a normal, uh, in the current way of looking at the CSV file, for example, information is looked at each row. So I, first of all, I go to the first row, I see if it's a T-shirt, then I go to the next row, I see if it's, if it's a t-shirt, then okay, this one it is, so it's 200 and so forth. Uh, at Parquet Files, I'm looking at this in a different way. So if I only want to pick up the sales for my product tables, I will only pick up for my product column, I will only pick up my product table column and my sales amount. This will allow me to be much faster and much more efficient and reduce my memory consumption. This is not, again, this is not as simplified as I'm talking about over here. This has a, a little bit more complexity on top of it, but this is the, the overall uh, 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 way it works. Why? Because having this col each, each column is treated as a separate entity. So being a separate entity, and this is similar to how, how, how the VertiPack engine works, so we look at each column individually, and then we take out the information that we want from the columns we want. In this case, I was talking about product and sales amount. So another thing that is also very uh, interesting in this is that uh, this type of files also has a row group, and this row group is uh, chunks of information that are for from each column. So in this case, I have three row groups. This is, a, again, a very simplified model. I, I took the example from Data Mozart. If you go to this link at the bottom, you'll know a lot more about this. But when I look at this, 
I can scan this uh, this data much faster. Why? Because if I look at this and I was looking at t-shirts again, the, the same example, I can skip row group two because it only has socks and it does not have t-shirts. So, and I can skip that and I will be much more efficient looking at the data. How this is done? How, how do I know that a row group only has socks for example, in this case, because these files, on top of everything they already have, on top of this uh, format that they have, they also store metadata information. And that metadata information stores information not only about uh, uh, the columns that we have and the type of data that each column has. So, for example, we can have uh, column the column product, what type of, of data it is, what type of encoding, and so on but we also store information at row group level and as you can see we have uh, the again the row group is the column product the column uh, country then row group one has the same two splits from from product and country and each one of them has their own uh, metadata that allow us to pick up quickly and efficiently the data that we are uh, looking at so again uh, open source, no vendor locking, uh, and language agnostic, so developers can uh, use these uh, parquet files in several different uh, languages to uh, um, to make their uh, programming language work, being it for consumption or to update. You can even update information using the the notebooks, for example, inside uh, Fabric and using Python or Spark or T-SQL, you can update a, a table and for uh, in, uh, in combination also the parquet files that are adjacent to it. This information that we are seeing over here, this row group, for example, the, the information about the, the, the metadata, everything is accessible in, in, uh, in Fabric and we'll see that. I won't show that in in uh, in uh, in detail, but we will see what type of information I can get uh, and how that information can help me over here in terms of my uh, uh, Delta Lake uh, approach. So, uh, so going to the to the Direct Lake, uh, our our main concept. So uh, we, uh, as we, as I said, this is based on the on the Delta Parquet files, and let's look what is the difference be between what we had before Fabric and what we have now. So before Fabric, we had two, mainly two uh, types of uh, semantic models. So and three, if we consider the 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 combination between the two of them that already exist. So we have import mode. So import mode is uh, what usually people tend to use. It's a very uh, uh, fast in terms of uh, uh, reporting. It's very fast. Why? Because when we when we do sorry, when we do a query on our report, we go to the data set and our tables are uh, uh, queried using DAX. Uh, those tables usually are imported from our storage. And uh, this is one of the big uh, cons on top of import, that we are duplicating our data. So uh, on top of duplicating our data, we are also having a latency in terms of our information. So this means that if I want to have uh, the latest information in an import mode, I need to wait for the refresh to happen. And depending on the size of the model, if I use uh, incremental refresh or not, if I use uh, other types of uh, tricks to uh, update my, my my data faster. This can take uh, between uh, five minutes to two or three hours. It depends, uh, again, uh, it depends on the model and we tend to optimize this type of procedures so that we can reduce it as much as possible using, as I said, for example, incremental mode is one of the options that we have to just to update the latest data. But as this model grows, this model also tends to be uh, uh, very heavy in the in the in the refresh. But as I said, this is latent and this did not brought what some uh, use cases needed that was real time. For that, we have direct query. So the direct query mode, the data set also exists. We can 
uh, create all our tables and our uh, measures on the data set as exactly as we do on the import mode. The only difference is that uh, when we do our, our, our reports and our queries in our reports or Excels or whatever it is, uh, uh, our DAX queries are then, uh, our data set only has the metadata of our, inf of our information, so of our tables and of our, our columns. When we do the DAX queries, those DAX queries are transformed into SQL queries, and those SQL queries are then run against our uh, databases, warehouses, whatever we use as our source data. This makes the information to be real-time, However, this is very slow. Why? Because this process of converting uh, DAX into the, into the SQL queries and then returning the result back to the to the report, it's it's slow. Uh, be aware that uh, depend on the size of the data, this slow can be from um, taking two or three seconds more than an import for taking more than one minute. Okay, this depends again on the use case. But uh, uh, the the question over here is that it's we, uh, we are uh, able to achieve real time, but we need to uh, uh, give a place to a little bit of performance and, and wait a little bit more. There was also a third method, as I said, that was the composite model. And the composite model, had, uh, as a best practice, we had some tables that were imported, namely the dimension tables were import mode or, or dual mode. And then we had our fact tables in the direct query mode. So this allowed to have uh, uh, the tables that were uh, uh, with slow change or with low change to be uh, uh, refreshed uh, quicker. Why? Because it was they were very small and our uh, fact tables were uh, the, the big ones were were used in the direct query. Again, a mix between both, uh, both uh, modes, not the best case, but it was. It is uh, a working option for us to have real-time data. With Fabric, it and with the use case of the, the parquet files, now we have the option of having direct lake mode. And over here, this is happened. I, I placed over here some magic, like a, a colleague of mine, Stephanie Bruno, always says. It's direct lake mode magic. That's why I kept this. And uh, what are the main differences between? Uh, uh, direct lake mode and the other two. So, as in direct query mode, we only get the metadata for our data set. So, I get my main, uh, main uh, details about my tables, about my measures, about my columns. So, I know what type of data I have. I know what, the, what are the names of the columns, of the tables, what are the relationships. So, everything works in the same way. The difference is that when I run my queries in my DEX queries, instead of going back to my data sources, in this case, my lake house or my warehouse, I go directly to my tables on the one lake. So I go to my parquet files. And if you remember what I said a few minutes ago, parquet files are based on a co columnar base. So if I, for example, do a report where I'm looking at um, sales, by, by country, I will only pick up those two columns directly from the data lake, uh, uh, from, the, from the one lake, sorry. And using the parquet files, this option is much faster. So uh, uh, it's not like in the direct query mode where everything is translated into a, a, a SQL query. No, uh, what, I, what I do is I pick up the tables that I need, and based on those tables, I do uh, the consumption of the columns that I need. In this case, that's why I was talking about so sales and country. So, but this is again a nine level explanation, and we will see uh, uh, how this works. Why is this so important? Because if I'm if I talk about a, a table with uh, five six million rows, in all of these uh, cases, this will be very fast. It's not a big problem. But if I'm talking about a table with one billion rows, for example. Uh, direct query mode will not even load. Why? Because in Power BI, we have that limit of 1 million rows for direct query. Import mode, I don't know if I can refresh it in, uh, in time. So uh, 1 million rows to be refreshed. If I do a full refresh, it will take too long. If I do an incremental, it, I, I can do it. But 
we may have problems because if we need to update with a new column or whatever, we probably need to do a full refresh if it's on the fact table, and that can take a long time. If we are talking about direct lake mode, since we are doing all the changes on the one lake itself, on the parquet files, everything is much faster to, to update, even if it takes a little bit longer to do the the update of the information in the in the one lay everything is being worked out in the in the background and using notebooks pipelines uh, and other uh, workloads that we have uh, the, uh, the work items that we have in uh, fabric available this can be very quickly to to be updated and we can have our uh, data set up and running in a few hours okay so but uh, uh, overall, so uh, what are the, the main uh, areas of over here of the direct link? So it's a semantic model capability for analyzing very large data volumes. It's based on parquet files and it, this eliminates the import mode uh, necessities requirements, okay? Because we don't need to duplicate data. It's very fast. Uh, uh, we don't need to have any translations to other languages. And we can use it in our other, our locals, our warehouse. We can use SQL endpoints to make queries to this data, so we don't need to only use the 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 Power BI report, for example, to make a, a consumption of this data. And we can also use XML endpoint to read and write. Okay, and if we are talking about the warehouse, we can even uh, talk about the SQL endpoint to update to change the warehouse and uh, everything uh, the data changes are automatically reflect, reflected be aware that this direct lake mode does not take out the necessity for import or direct query okay again this is uh, uh, as its advantages it's very useful especially when we are talking about very large data volumes but if you are using import mode and it's working uh, don't change it, right? <laughs> so don't, don't fix don't fix what is not broken. So it's the same purpose. I'm not saying so. This is not for all the use cases, uh, but this is also nothing that cannot be used, right? So we always need to be careful with this type of of um, uh, options because every case is a case. But we have some some drawbacks over here. So uh, one of the major ones is the fallback. And the fallback basically is a process where if we over if we step some uh, guardrails, we uh, the the direct lake mode goes back to direct query. So this means that your model will not break, but it will take longer to load your data into your visualization. So uh, these guardrails are define the resource limits for direct lake mode, and these guardrails and I'm talking about these three over here. Uh, so the parquet files per table, the row groups per table, and the rows per table. This, these three are based on each query that you do. And if you look at this, this is based also on each, is each queue that you have. So if you are looking at F64, for example, if you look at your uh, one lake, and you go to your uh, tables within your within your uh, within your uh, uh, lake house, for example. If you have a table that has more than five thousand files, and you do a query on top of that table, this will fall back to direct query. We will see this in a little bit on on the table that I have. We will see what will happen. Uh, not based on the number of parquet files, but all but based on the number of rows. But uh, it's just for you to understand this, uh, these three uh, uh, things that we have. Then we have, if you remember, I talked about row, row, row groups per table. This is also in, in case of the F64. And if you see for all of them, it's exactly the same number between parquet files and row groups. These row groups, it's based again on that table. If we have too many row groups, it will, all, will always fall back to direct query. Uh, and this again, we can visualize that in our uh, report, in our Power BI report, for example. And then the last one is uh, rows per table. So if I'm eating a query and that query is going to a table that has 1.5 billion rows in F64, for example, 
I will get the fallback. So uh, uh, again, this is uh, the three main ones that we have. Again, this is per query. So this means that if you do a query on your model and you have a table, and let's just look at the uh, rows per table. If you have one table that has two, two billion rows and the rest of the tables only has uh, 10 million rows, if you never use that big table to do any calculations, you will always have direct query on your report. As soon as you do a visual that uses that table, that specific visual will fall back to direct, to direct query mode. So I will uh, show this. Again, another, op another thing that is also a guardrail is the maximum size of the model we within the one leg. So everything over F64, we don't have any limitations of size. Everything that is lower, we have these limitations of 10 gigabytes, 24 F16 and 44 F32. The memory amount, uh, the max memory, is the same. Uh, is the same limits that we have in import mode. So if you look at F64 import mode, 25 gigabytes is the maximum that we have for for um, for import mode. So if a query is running and it hits this maximum memory of 25 gigabytes, you will have an error. For direct lake mode, it's exactly the same thing. Doesn't matter. Everything that you have around this, everything can be lower, but if you are eating that max memory because you are using a, a very elaborate DAX um, calculation or something like that, then you get to, to, to be uh, uh, with a memory issue, okay? I've been talking for too long. Let me just uh, finalize this part. Just some issues and limitations. This has been evolving. I can tell you that when Direct Lake, for example, started, we were not able to do row level security. Now it, it's available. So keep uh, uh, a lookout on the overview of Direct Lake mode because this is always updating. But some of the things that I that we can have over here is that currently. Direct lake mode is only available for a single lake house or warehouse. So you cannot combine tables from different lake houses to have a, a direct lake mode. Okay, you can have direct query, but not direct lake or import mode, but not direct lake. Composite models are also not supported. Calculated columns and calculated ta tables are also not supported. So you cannot use DAX uh, columns to do this. So if you need to have any calculations, any uh, if you need to have any uh, columns on your models that need to be uh, done uh, additional, you need to use the ETL processes that we have to, to update them. So notebooks, pipelines, uh, and so on. Uh, SQL endpoint, uh, if you are on a warehouse, for example, you can also add columns there, but you cannot do it uh, directly on the Legos. And then uh, tab uh, tables or views, uh, basically views that are used on direct lake mode are also not, uh, uh, no, sorry, tables, the views that are based on SQL are also not uh, available in direct lake mode. Why? Because they are running SQL. As you run SQL, you, you go back to direct query to direct query mode. So this makes sense in terms of the connectivity. If you are connecting to the SQL endpoint, then you are not connecting to the uh, parquet files directly, so you cannot use them in direct lake mode. So some of the things that we have over here, uh, some of them are, are uh, basic things, but uh, like uh, uh, the type of, of columns that are available or not, but again, uh, limitations that you may uh, need to to take into account. So now let's go to a little bit demo. So let me just uh, let me just close my Power BI file. I don't know why is is not loading. Let me just close over here. Just, just a second. I apologize. Let me just close the Power BI. I don't know why it stopped, but hopefully everything will run as I, I need. OK, so let me go to the let me go to the to the to the service and let me just show you a little bit about what we have. So I have this data model. This data model is a direct lake multi table, multiple tables that I have. I will open this model. This uh, this model, basically, I have three uh, tables. I have a small table. 
I have a, a, a big table and I have a medium table. Why do I have these three tables? These tables are connected, and let me just go back over here to my to my uh, to my uh, lineage. And if I if I see the lineage of this semantic model, you can see that this semantic model is connected to a lake house. So this lake house. Uh, uh, as you create a, a fabric workspace and a fabric lake house, automatically uh, uh, the SQL endpoint for that lake house is created. So in this case, I have this uh, uh, this this model connected to the to this lake house. And as I said, I have three tables. Why? Because on this model, and I'm currently on F64 trial version. Uh, if you remember the F64 is based on, and let me just showcase once again, F64 has 1.5 billion rows limit. So what, what did I do? I have, again, going to the model and opening out my data model, I have this small table has around 70 million rows. The medium table has 1.3 billion rows, so keeping us inside the guardrails that we need, and this big table has, I think, if I'm not mistaken, over 1.6 billion rows. This model currently, and if you look at the semantic model, is on the, on the, let me just open zoom it over here just for you to see. So this, uh, currently the direct lake behavior is on automatic. So depending on what we do, we can go fall, we can fall back to direct query or not, okay? Then I have some measures over here, and the measures basically I have uh, the, the tree that will that I, that I need for this is this uh, rows small that is basically the count rows of the tree tables. Okay, let me in, then open Power BI Desktop. I have a semantic. I have a report that is built on top of this uh, semantic model, and. Is this direct lake? Hopefully, it will open. Let's. Okay, let me remove this. Okay, so this is running. Let me just increase this a little bit so that we can see a little bit better. Okay, so, and this is split. I have this split by the tree table. So let's see what we have. And so let's start at the bottom, as I said. So this table over here is connected to rows small table. As you can see, 76 million rows. I have a table with further details over here. This has a, a, a count rows, so this is doesn't have all 76 million, but I have all the information over here, even if it's grouped, okay? Next, I have my medium-sized table that has 1.3 billion rows. As you can see, this model open up the 1.3 billion rows over here. Again, I have this uh, uh, grouped by, but I'm consuming the data from that uh, um, from that table that is the medium sized table. And at last, I have this uh, table that is the large one that has 1.6 billion rows. Remember, F64, the 1.5 billion rows limit, it's over here, is our uh, cutting cutting point. As you can see over here, this value, in terms of uh, number of rows, I have a filter over here. I will take out the filter in a few minutes, but I just want you to show one thing. How can I see that these three tables or and these cards are falling back into direct query or are still in direct lake mode? So let's do one thing. As, as usual, let's go open a blank page. Let's open our performance analyzer. And let's start recording. Okay, sorry, this blank page was not blank. I apologize. So let me just clear. Let me stop. Let me start again. And let's go back to this page too. And let's see what are the times that we have for this and what happens. As you can see, so I have my my time. So my cards. And if I look at this, my small card, my small table loaded in uh, 500 uh, milliseconds, while my large table loaded in 900 milliseconds. This is not a lot, you can say, but let's look at the details. If I look at the details over here, I can see that I only have a DAX query. 
okay? Nothing more, everything is visual display, another, okay? Let's look at the second part, card medium. Once again, I have DAX query, visual display, another, okay? Now let's look at my large size table. In this large size table, sorry, in this large card, the, in this card that is picking up the information from the large size table, now I have a slightly difference. I have a direct query, uh, uh, a direct query uh, syntax. Why? Because while we were looking at the information, and I go back to this card, words, if you remember, if I hit a table that has more than 1.5 billion rows, I will fall back to direct query. Now let's see what happens if I just go to this table and I just take out my, uh, uh, my uh, again, if we go to the tables, also DAX small query, medium size, also a DAX query, and large size, I have a direct query, okay? But now let's go to this table and let's take out the our, uh, uh, our date filter. Let's see what happens to this when I have my uh, large model, uh, my table uh, from the large model being unfiltered. So this will take a few seconds while this is running. So this is the way you can see directly on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, Power BI if a table is falling back or if a visual is falling back to direct query, okay? The question over here is how can we see this in a different way. So while this is running, and let's uh, uh, let's wait for this to run, we can have the, the direct link mode experience, uh, uh, and I, I need to be quick because we only have 45 minutes. I, hopefully I can showcase everything that I need while this is running. Uh, on the direct link mode, there is one thing that is called, and let me just showcase over here the, if you remember, I also talked about the size of the, uh, uh, data model. This data model has a size of 8.66 gigabytes. For F64, we have unlimited size, but it's it's not that huge because this is even smaller than the F2 capacity needs for a direct lake mode. So a small, a small. Uh, in terms of uh, of size, it's a small uh, model. But if we look at our, if you go to our tables, and if you look, and over here in, the, we are connecting through XML endpoint. If you go to to view metrics, there is one thing over here that is the temperature of our columns. This temperature over here is when, uh, and basically this, what this means is when you use a column inside your uh, reports, that column is taken into memory. So the next time you run the same query or you use the same column, it's faster to load from the direct uh, uh, lake uh, experience. So this is the same thing as import. You keep it, you keep things in memory and every time you run things, they are much faster to load, okay? So as you can see, now we have the error that I was waiting for. And as you can see, trying to look at everything, I get the one million row for direct query. Let me just do one quick change over here. Let's go to our data model. Let's just change our semantic model to direct lake only. And let's see what happens when I update my, my table so to direct lake only. So if I go over here and if I do a refresh on my, on my data model, as you can see, the two top bottom ones loaded really fast. Don't, didn't take too long, they already updated, but this one, I got an error now, that is, and if we look at this, we cannot process the request because we require a fallback to direct query mode. So this means that we can even check if our visualizations are eating a, a, a table that is more than the, the limits of the guardrails. As you can see, both, all of them are working except these two visuals from the from the direct, uh, from the large table. Again, as I was saying, this temperature uh, uh, talks about how hot a column is. And we can also see this, and just to finalize, in a notebook. I have done this notebook where I pick up the information uh, from uh, 
from and I'm connecting. Hopefully, I can connect this as soon as possible. Where I do a connection through semantic link, using the semantic link, I'm able to connect to my uh, workspace and to my data set. In this case, is my direct lake multiple tables uh, workspace. And now I have I can run a, a, a VAX query where I can see what is the temperature. And if I run this, you will see that uh, this and this was a previous test that I was doing. You can see that we can pick up this temperature column. And every time I use a new column on my on my visualizations, hopefully this won't take too long. Every time I use a new column on my visualizations, this temperature will increase. So the further I use a column on my visualization, the hotter the, the, that column is, the faster it will load on our, on our model. I think I only have three minutes. This already ran, so let me just run this uh, uh, semantic model over here. And let's see what do we have as a result for this column. So hopefully this will be fast to load. The first, the first time it takes a few seconds. So as you can see, and if I do my temperature from largest to smallest, my first column is this one, my um, yellow cab medium table, and th is this temperature. So if I go back to my report and let me just quickly go to my calendar table and pick up my date and just add it as a visual over here. If I rerun this, you will see that my calendar date column, now it's the hottest one. Why? Because it was the last one that I used, so it's on top of the, of the, of the temperature. So this is uh, basically what, uh, what we can see. We have a lot more to show. We only have 45 minutes. Just to finalize some uh, advantages, so this uh, allows advanced data processing, uh, optimized for real time. Uh, it's a unified data management, and uh, you can use it in several different cases, so financial sector, supply chain, health, and so on. Again, big data models, this is very advantageous. Um, I, I think I have some time for some questions, one, or one minute, I think, if you need my context. A special shout out to Sandeep, the fabric guru, and Nicola, the data Mozart, they helped me out to getting this information, so I really need to talk about them. They are the maximum uh, about this topic, some of the, at least my two references. And uh, again, thank you to, to Data Tomogram for having me and sorry for the short time in terms of questions, but this is a really interesting subject, at least for me. Mm -hmm.